Hello, and welcome to this scientific video abstract. My name is Dr. Enikur Zsoldos. I am a postdoctoral researcher in the Neurobiology of Aging group at the University of Oxford, Department of Psychiatry. I am the lead author of the open access, peer-reviewed scientific article published in Brain Communications, Association of Midlife Stroke Risk with Structural Brain Integrity and Memory Performance at Older Ages. In the next few minutes, I will explain the science, clinical context, and implications of our work. Cardiovascular health in midlife is an established risk factor for cognitive function later in life. Knowing mechanisms of this association may allow preventative steps to be taken to preserve brain health and cognitive performance in older age. The Framingham Stroke Risk Score is a clinically validated score that predicts the likelihood of a first-time stroke in the next 10 years. It comprises of age, sex, cardiovascular health, diabetes and smoking habits. We wanted to know whether beside the risk of stroke, it also predicted brain integrity and subsequent memory performance in older age. Stroke risk was measured at five time points across mid to late life in a large group of civil servants of the Whitehall II Stress and Health Study when participants were on average 48, 54, 59, 64 and 68 years old. Post-retirement, when they were on average 70 years old, 800 of them came to Oxford for an MRI scan and cognitive testing. In almost 600 of them, stroke risk across mid to late life was associated with lower voxel vice gray and white matter integrity measures. Stroke risk in midlife, as early as 20 years before the MRI scan, predicted widespread lower gray matter volume, which you can see depicted in blue. Stroke risk predicted lower fractional anisotropy, an estimate of white matter integrity, as early as 15 years before the scan. After removing the effect of socio-demographic confounders, such as age, sex and education, stroke risk in midlife, but not in later life, predicted lower gray matter density in the medial temporal lobe and lower fractional anisotropy in later, but not in midlife, along the corpus callosum. In addition, but not shown here, Changes in stroke risk across the five measurement time points were associated with widespread lower fractional anisotropy and lower gray matter density in subneocortical structures. Structural equation modeling suggested that such reductions in brain integrity were associated with cognitive impairment. Framingham stroke risk at later time points was best associated with white matter hyperintensity and hippocampal volume, which in turn were associated with memory performance at the time of the scan. Findings of our study show that the Framingham stroke risk score may be relevant for primary prevention, not only for stroke risk itself, but also for subclinical gray matter atrophy in younger ages and as early as 20 years in advance, as well as subsequent memory changes in later life. Brain areas such as the medial temporal lobe are often implicated in cognitive impairment and dementias, thus reserving them into older age is important. In the future, we may be able to use imaging results to track and target the modification of risk factors throughout adulthood. Our findings therefore highlight that brain plasticity is present in later life and the need to consider cerebrovascular health in midlife as an important factor for structural brain integrity and cognitive function later in life. Thanks for your attention. You can find more details of our study in Brain Communications and if you have any queries or comments, feel free to contact me.